Anatomy short and sweet. Today we look at the knee joint. The knee joint, Articulatio genus in Latin, is one of the largest and strongest joints in the human body. There are basically three bones involved in the knee joint. On the one hand, the femur. On the other, the tibia. And thirdly, well visible here from the side, the largest sesamoid bone of the human body, the kneecap or patella in Latin. The femur is characterized by two strong bone protrusions, covered with joint cartilage, which is also called condyle, and as a matter of fact, the condylus lateralis and the condylus medialis. If you take a look at the knee joint, you will notice that it is secured by a multitude of ligament structures, which simply prevent the bony elements of the knee joint from moving against each other too severely. For example, the kneecap itself is embedded in a tendon. That is the tendon of the musculus quadriceps femoris, which particularly pulls here from above over the kneecap to the tibia and is virtually embedded in this tendon, naturally resulting in the appropriate attachment. The knee joint is also stabilized by other ligament structures, the lateral ligaments for one, which one can see here, and here. And then inside the knee, the so-called cruciate ligaments, which one can see here and here. Let's have a look at these ligaments individually. Here we are lateral. That one can see on the fibula that runs here and here medial. This lateral ligament is appropriately called the ligamentum collaterale laterale. And the one on the opposite side, the ligamentum collaterale mediale. These lateral ligaments stabilize the knee against so-called varus and valgus stress, in other words, against bending strain, as it appears on the horizontal level between the femur and tibia. It is therefore clear that the ligament prevents the medial and lateral folding open of the knee. In case of respective ruptures of the ligament, it is also clinically established that the knee can fold open, in other words, that the ligament does not fulfill its function anymore. Other important ligaments are situated inside the knee joint. For that purpose, I fold the knee joint open and tilt it slightly so that it's better visible. Here we see two ligaments. On the one hand, the front cruciate ligament, the ligamentum cruciatum anterius, and directly behind it, the ligamentum cruciatum posterius. These two ligaments stabilize the knee joint against shifting movements of the tibia, which take place on this level, the sagittal level. One can see it quite clearly. In other words, the front cruciate ligament would prevent the tibia from being shifted anterior against the femur. In reverse, the rear cruciate ligament prevents the tibia from being shifted posterior against the femur. If the ligaments are torn, clinically the so-called drawer sign appears accordingly. For example, when the front cruciate ligament is torn, the tibia can be shifted to the front compared to the femur, and that is called an anterior drawer sign, because it can practically pull the tibia from the joint like a drawer. When we look at the knee joint from the inside, we see two other important structures made up of fibrocartilage. Those are the so-called menisci. On the one hand, we see the outer meniscus, the meniscus lateralis, and here, on the medial side of the knee, the meniscus medialis, the inner meniscus, which is grown together with the inner ligament. These menisci have a very important function by equalizing the incongruities or unevenness between the joint surfaces of the femur and the tibia, and ensure a better force and load distribution in the knee. We see then that the joint surfaces between the tibia and femur are not completely congruent and the menisci basically resemble, one can say, hollow spaces, which are created between the bones simply by the fact that it fills it up. Well, the knee joint is really not a very uncomplicated joint made up of several structures.